Anyway guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So we are finally going to be taking a look at the new tier 5 unit, the Retiari. If we can actually find them anywhere in the barracks, there they are. Um, or as the upgraded version, the Pavorines. Let's just stick to the Retiari, sounds a little bit more Roman. Anyway, I'm going to start off and just get it out of the way to begin with. What an interesting unit, and they really are. Initially, I've sort of played a few battles with these, didn't really get on very well with them, kind of been struggling to make them really do enough work to, to considering that they're a tier 5 unit, right? Because they're actually, you know, we're still 310 leadership, you've got to be doing relatively well with them for that cost for it to be worthwhile to use them. But the more I've played with them, I sort of feel like I found a little bit of a sort of balance with them that I enjoy, at least a lot more. And so I'm starting to get into them a little bit now. They're no means feel like the greatest tier 5 unit ever unleashed, but they can be pretty, pretty decent and have some nice little games with them. So in terms of veterancy lines, you actually get to basically pick two options. In this case, I want along the top line for the basically the extra javelin damage. So javelin AP increase, bit of extra block break, things like that, more ammo, and the reduced cooldown on the throw, which puts the um, throw on actually a pretty short cooldown now, which is pretty nice, sort of about 8 seconds, something like that. Not too bad. It, you know, it's not a javelin unit, something like, something like Imperial Javelins, but you still get to chuck, chuck your javelins fairly often, and they have such a flat and straight throw, as I'll probably I'll throw a clip in now, that... They actually are quite nice for sort of sniping units almost at fairly long distances. Other than that, there's this middle middle line here which focuses on basically the trident charge. Um, but for me, in my opinion, spear fishing, whichever one it is, this one, where they kind of do this three jab, is the more damaging ability. So kind of that's what I was more interested in. And this sort of combines with a slightly more defensive veterancy line down the bottom as well, with things like the range damage, etc., which is kind of kind of nice to have. And then you go, the reduced damage taken during spearfishing and stuff like that is kind of, for me, I felt the way to go. So in terms of their three abilities, yeah, you get the one javelin throw, called it a doom throw, it's just a javelin throw, but the stuff it does hit does get um, basically marked with this mark of death, which is just like a modifier. If you then charge into them with the trident charge or stab them with the spearfishing, if they have the mark of death applied, then you basically get a damage increase against the unit that you're attacking. The idea is, throw your javelins first, charge in with the trident, and then finish them off with the spear fishing. Spear fishing has a relatively long cooldown, um, sort of, you know, circa 30 seconds, whereas it's only sort of 5 or seconds or so on the trident charge, so you can activate this fairly, fairly regularly. Uh, only two formations, pretty similar. One is slightly tighter. I tend to run them round in the block formation. Um, in terms, then, of doctrines, what we've been running... You can put Javelin Doctrines on them, which is really nice because it means you can put things like um, the extra piercing damage, the extra piercing AP, and also things like the extra base Javelin damage, which is really nice to have. I have put on the extra health Doctrine, which does bump up their health a reasonable amount. There is a 6 second Spear Fishing Cooldown Doctrine on the, um, on the Seasonal Veterancy line. I haven't bothered putting that on. I kind of feel like you could... But 30 seconds down to 24, most battles have been decided within that 24 second period, particularly as you're probably not spearfishing on the first second of the fight anyway, and you've either kind of won, lost, or whatever's happened, you know, or dead, by the time it comes off cooldown. So I kind of feel like it's not that helpful having it from a, from a long to a fairly long cooldown, you know, if that makes sense. So other than that, I've just run with a siege fighter, and a Breakthrough Doctrine, really just to increase their base damage. Makes them a little bit more damaging, makes them a little bit more effective, makes the Javelins do a bit more damage, etc, etc. I didn't feel it was really necessary to run the extra ammo. You get sort of four, maybe five throws anyway. And with the eight second cooldown between throws, you know, they're not really a Javelin unit. They're not Jav Sergeants, they're not um, Javs. That's not really what they're about. Um, anyway, kit cost. Isn't too bad at the moment, 5,000, but that's reduced because obviously it's a season, sort of off-season unit. So I think that's all of that I've got to say with them. Let's hop into some battles with them then. See what we can do, see if we can take out a few enemies along the way. So we kick things off defending on a little bit of wall fort. 
Enemies done kind of a fairly classic move, pushed over the bridge and are really threatening the B point. Kind of a tough location for this unit here. Um, because of this sort of elevation, it makes it quite hard to get the javelins to throw down. Physically completely missed that the first throw. And the biggest threat here is trebs, right? We're all on one small little square. It's just a prime treb target for the enemy teams. That's the second trab, treb, treb or trab? A trappy treb landing on this spot. And we push back up. Go a little bit closer to the edge, get the javelins angled a little bit further down. And we can get some throws in, get ourselves six kills. And get engaged, use the trident, they charge in, get the damage in. Go on for the spear fishing, get ourselves up to nearly 20 kills, but we do start to get hit by that third treb. We managed to get bulk of the unit out, only two losses. And you kind of get a little bit of an idea of how this unit works. The javelins are not too bad, they're not amazing, but they're not actually that bad. And the unit has really good melee damage, but they're fragile, and that's the key. Things like the spear fishing actually do a really good chunk of damage, but the unit is fairly fragile. Anyway, I decided we were going to hold B. Got a little bit caught out by that Ladachi. I assumed he was going to go straight on, but as he times to loop back round, we can just knock him off with our ultimate and then use the unit just to overwhelm him. And the unit takes him down really pretty quickly. As I say, the unit has high damage. Even against heroes, they put out you know quite a chunk of damage. They're just fragile, they just don't have much health. They have no shield, they're vulnerable to range, all this sort of stuff. High damage, quite fragile. But then we come back down to A. And this is kind of the perfect fight for this unit. I can control the engagement, pick my fight. It's a smallish fight, so I've got the advantage. Go in, lock down the enemy hero, straight away finish him off with the unit. Go straight on with the fear, spear fishing, pick up another sort of 10, 15 kills, follow through with the jab throw, and then we can clear the fight and push around and clear the combat area and head back to the supply point. And that is sort of smaller skirmishes seem to be where this unit really, really excels. I think the problem comes in when you start to get onto those bigger fights. So we got the unit to the supply point, healed up, come back, just coming back because A is now being threatened again. Same match, same game. And this is kind of the opposite situation. We come round, I can get my javelins in nicely on the fight, do a good chunk of damage, close range right in the face, and get stuck in, but there's just too much stuff. We managed to use the spear fishing to overwhelm an enemy hero, get him down, get us up to 45 kills, but it's just far too much stuff there. Although they did end up trebbing themselves, so I suppose that's one saving grace from the whole thing. <laughs> so from defense to now on attack, using the unit a bit more aggressively. So pushing the A point on shield of the capital, always a fairly tough one, but thankfully not too much stuff there defending. Do get hit by a bit of artillery, Keep pushing in, want to get close, and I want to initially just use the javelins. Get them around the corner, nice cluster of enemies, close range, really flat trajectory on the javelins, and we get one kill. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Well, I was thinking, okay, well, there's quite a bit of friendly stuff coming in. I think we'll probably get engaged in melee shortly, but let's just let's just try and use a few javelins for now. We've got the ammo. Cooldown's relatively close. We got a little bit better, but we get engaged by condos behind it. Okay, so we're now using the trident, using the spear fishing to get in, and you see how they pick up these kills quite quickly as we're using them fairly aggressively, and we start to push them towards the staircase. Try and clutch a little javelin throw, we do get a few hits with it, but nothing major. And kind of with the way the battle develops in this charge down the stairs, just dragging the unit down now, there's nothing we can really do other than just sort of try and get involved as quickly as we can. I guess this is a time where... That spear fishing cooldown doctrine would be handy because we're still on cooldown, but it would have naturally been off. But it tends to not happen all that often in that situation. Use the javelin throat to grab a few extra kills through the gates, and you're sort of hopefully getting an idea how this javelin throw performs. You know, you, if you land a good number of hits, it's sort of five, six, seven kills. The javelins are pretty damaging, there just aren't that many models to throw javelins. And once you take a few of your units dead, then the damage output is fairly diminished, not because the javelins aren't powerful, but because there's just not very many models to throw them. And that's kind of a bit of a problem in my opinion. Anyway, that all went pretty well. We managed to clear the airport A point out pretty successfully, push straight down, straight onto the supply point, and that's gonna enable us to get healed up a little bit. Just waiting to decide well, which way we're gonna go. I mean, there's only really one way to go from here. I was thinking about those arches in the distance, but they, they move would have kind of been a bit of an interesting test to sort of how much range do these guys have? They seem to throw quite a long way. 
And they've got this fairly unique form of aiming, which I'm sure you've noticed, which is different to pretty much all the other javelin units. It's almost more like a musket unit's forced fire than it is actually like a javelin unit, which kind of makes it a little bit odd. But I think it's because they have this sort of super flat javelin trajectory that it works like that. Anyway, push up to the entrance of the gap, get a couple more throws in, get stuck in with a few of the javelins um, against some of the enemy javelin units, push around the corner and get stuck into the remains of these Iron Reapers here. Which you can see with the Trident Charge, we do a little bit of damage, but not that much. But once we go in with the Spear Fishing, it actually takes them out really quite quickly because the damage on that ability is really, really high. Nice cluster of enemies in front of us, straight in with a javelin throw, another five kills or something, as we try and keep this point clear. And kind of in this situation, I'm sometimes alternating between engaging in melee and just using them as a javelin unit. In this sort of situation, I'm back to using, oh, here we go, back to using them just as a javelin unit. Because it's a bit of a melee, can't really see what's going on, kind of trebs going everywhere, don't really want to get stuck into hand to hand if I can help it. And we don't need to, and it still gives us enough to clear the point. But I find you can sort of chop and change a little bit of this unit. If there's really big fights going on and you can't really fight just sort of around the edges, then I think just using them as a javelin unit is kind of the better way to go. They are quite a fragile unit. But if the balance starts to tip or sort of a fringe unit that you can flank and fight more one-on-one, -on -one, then with their um, trident charge and then particularly the spear fishing behind, they seem to actually be fairly good melee users. And that's kind of at least been my experience with them. Anyway, I would be kind of curious how you guys have all been getting on with them, so do let me know in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conqueror's Blade content, and I shall see you guys all on the next video.